as you get dehydrated to a race, is there a correct amount of dehydration? Like, does performance fall off a cliff or is it kind of linear going mm. down the whole time? Mm -hmm. And how should we as athletes balance that? Especially mm. a lot of people, especially runners and cyclists are concerned about weight. Yeah, like right? climbers yeah. especially, right? Yeah, yeah, for definite. So that's a really good question because, and that's been debated a lot, you know, and there mm -hmm. is the, the honest answer is there's no one size fits all answer. So I think things that are things that we can sort of throw out straight away is you don't need to replace everything that you're losing. That was the 1990s theory. That's mm -hmm. what I grew up with. Like you got to drink, replace all your sweat losses. Otherwise, your performance is going to suffer well, during yeah. the whole workout. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's yeah. that's what logic says, right? Yeah. That makes people throw up. Yeah. One in, one out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or it yeah. can give you hyponatremia if you're not yeah. careful, oh, yeah. which is really serious. Can you describe that for a second before you finish the answer? So yeah. hyponatremia yeah. is a dilution of your blood sodium levels. It happens when you either drink too much water or you sweat a lot and replace only you know low sodium fluids. Uh -huh. So people like myself, it's controversial, but it's thought that people like myself who lose a lot of salt are more at risk of hyponatremia because obviously I have to drink less uh -huh. in order to give us a relative dilution that's the same as someone who sweats a lot less salt. Yeah, which is logic. Just, is, is it really hard to get to that point? Depends how you look at it. I've done it to myself when okay. I was younger. Yeah. Um, and people die from it every year. So it happens. I think it happens more because because of this this kind of strange fear of dehydration that everyone has because the theory with the, if you ask most you know, sort of non-technical athletes about dehydration. It's just like, oh yeah, I need to drink more. You know, yeah. it's like dehydration <laughs> yeah. is the problem. Overhydration gets a lot less airtime. It's yeah. getting more airtime, which is good yeah. because it's a balancing act. But I think that de dehydration, the fear of dehydration is way more prevalent. Is it like, um, is it a, a state that you enter into and at that point hyponatremia or is it more of like a gradient? Like you become it, hyponatremic almost. Yeah, you would. So, so there was a study done uh, over seven years at the Ironman Frankfurt where they took blood samples from the finishers. I'm in Frankfurt is in August. It's pretty hot normally. Yeah. And they found that 10% of the finishers were hyponatremic to varying degrees. So hyponatremia, the definition starts when your blood sodium levels drop below 135. Oh, so wow. for most people, if you drop to like 132, you might feel a bit ropey. If it's like 129, you might feel really quite rough, but it gets down to like 120 and you're in real trouble and yeah. you get into the teens and people start you know getting into serious trouble or or dying yeah. so yeah it's a gradient and your body will do all sorts to stop you getting there so you see people throwing up lots of water uh -huh. and, and and hopefully you see them peeing a lot you know the body's trying to dump fluids yeah. but it's it's tough for the body when you're exercising because you pee less so yeah. that's why you're more yeah. susceptible to it when you're exercising potentially. So what would be the symptoms? Sorry, I, I'm, no, no, I'm digging I, into this. I want to go like, further into this too. So yeah, you yeah. keep going. Perfect. Like what would be the symptoms that you would experience? And I'm, I'm get, and actually I'm getting it like uh, when Chad and I did the Rockwell relay, that one race, it was like 50 mile an hour headwinds yeah. and it was extremely hot in Southern mm -hmm. Utah. And <clears throat> I felt like I just like the dry mouth was yeah. really rough and I wasn't drinking any mix. This is pretty early on in my cycling career. <laughs> yeah. I was just drinking water yeah. and I was going through bottles nonstop because I had a support car that was always giving yeah. me bottles. And I really, I got to a point where like my body was like shaking. It was like, yeah. even like hard, to like open up my hands, yeah. like uh, cognitive ability was completely gone. Mm. It was terrible. And I, I, I don't know, there could have been a number of different things, but mm. are there signs like that, that you start to feel with your body? Definitely. You, you, probably start to feel confused, mm -hmm. lethargic. Um, you may counterintuitively get a dry mouth. Uh -huh. You might feel bloated. You might get puff. You know, you might start to feel puffy because you've, your body's going to move fluid from the bloodstream out into the um, extracellular space and intracellular space. So you swell up a little uh -huh. bit. You can start to, some people start to cramp. Huh. Uh, you, you, oh. you, you just a bit, bit nausea, <laughs> just feeling like lousy. Yeah. You know, like the, I had it in a, a long distance triathlon many years ago. And I just remember that feeling of like, someone's pulled the plug and I don't feel like it's low blood sugar because I'm eating and like, that's not helping. Yeah. And I'm just, I just feel terrible. You know, it's just, it's really, it's, um, yeah, lethargy and 
really like a bad hangover almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's like you just pain. feel, yeah, yeah. And, and you can get <laughs> cognitive disturbance because what happens is your brain starts to swell up because it absorbs fluid, which is ultimately if people die from hyponatremia, what they actually die from usually is brain injury. Because, Interesting. Because it, your brain swells and crushes against your skull. So it's a pretty nasty thing. Holy cow, crazy. So can you get hyponatremia if you're drinking a sufficiently salty sports drink? Yes. Oh, yes. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> you can because ultimately even a really – so your blood runs at about – if we're talking milligrams per litre because that's what I understand best, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah of course. 3,600 yeah. milligrams per litre or so is how is your the saltiness of your blood. Mm -hmm. So anything like a really strong sports drink is about 1,500 milligrams per litre, and that's three times stronger than a normal one. Mm. So anything you're drinking is going to be relatively – more fluid than salt so you can drown yourself in those even if they're quite salty huh. the reality is though you know you you stand more chance of going hyponatremic if you're just pounding loads of water and sweating a lot so the yeah. idea is is to is to is to find that balance point french fries <laughs> lots of supplement french fries. with french fries exactly. yeah, yeah. If you like that video, you should subscribe to our channel. There's more where that came from. And even like the video down below with a thumbs up or leave us a comment. If you want to see race analysis videos, click right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, click over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. It works. Trust us. Just trust us. <laughs> we guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Or your money back. It's true. Take us up on it. <laughs>